everybody, it is Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures, and thanks so much for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you five different ways to fail at selling jewelry online, plus a few extra bonus tips at the end, so make sure you stay tuned. If you are interested in learning more about jewelry, whether vintage jewelry, costume jewelry, or fine jewelry, make sure you go down there and hit subscribe. You'll find lots of different tutorial videos on my channel about different styles of jewelry, different makes, different stones, and also best ways to sell them online. But in this video, we are going to talk about failure. So let's jump in. I've got five main ways that you can fail plus a few bonus tips at the end. So let's get started. Number one. So the first way to fail at selling jewelry on eBay or Etsy or wherever you're selling it online is to take bad, dark, or blurry pictures. That has got to be the number one thing that I see in the jewelry community um, with people trying to get into selling jewelry and wondering why their jewelry isn't selling. Well, when, a lot of times when people share their listings, their images are dark, blurry, you can't really make out the details on the piece. And so I've got a few examples and I'm going to show you. Um, so as you can see, these are pretty dark and this one's a bit blurry, you can't really see much on the back. Also here, you can see my fingers, oh that was supposed to be a surprise, I'm picking on myself. Um, uh, so this, uh, I actually put the measurement in there, so that's that's good. But here it's overexposed. The pictures, you can't really see the the details very well. So I am picking on myself. These, this is one of my early listings. I would not want to pick on anybody else. So um, as you can see, they're dark. You can't really see the details very well. They're blurry in some of them. So there's that one. <laughs> Let's take a look at the next one. Here's the next one, and these are sold, so you got they finally did sell, even though they look a mess. They finally sold. So these are some solds I had. These ones, the 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 image is so far away, the piece is so far away, I didn't zoom it in. So you can see it's like, what what is this on? Like a sheet or something? I don't even know what's going on here. Um, I you can kind of see some of the, the issues with them and the detail problems. And I did get a picture of the back. How stylish are these pictures? I mean, come on, they're not it's not even centered. So I have got to say that I would not do this again. I would make sure that they looked nice and were much brighter <laughs> and were a little more zoomed in on things. So that's number one. Make sure that your pictures are clear and you can see all the details and that you can see all of the different angles and aspects of the piece. Number two. So the second way to fail at selling jewelry online is to not take enough detailed pictures. Ever heard the phrase, a picture's worth a thousand words? Well, when it comes to selling jewelry, a picture can be worth a thousand dollars. I so often see people just taking pictures of the main pendant and not taking a picture of the front or the back or they'll have just one picture. Um, you want to make sure that you fill up all of the slots that you can and get pictures of the fronts, the backs, all of the different aspects of the jewelry. This is another one of my listings. Horrible, horrible, horrible pictures. But I only have three pictures and there, there's not enough really, and if you zoom, I mean, this one looks good because it's kind of close up, but not even really, never mind, that's not that like good. Um, but there are not enough good detailed pictures. You see, this one's really blurry. This one, it's, yeah, it's like sideways, wonky. All right, so those dark, blurry pictures. You need to make sure your pictures are crystal clear, that you've got focus on the really important parts of the jewelry. You want to make sure you get pictures of the maker's mark. You want to get pictures of any flaws. You want to make sure that you have got a picture of the whole piece as well as some of the zoomed in um, images of different parts of it that are of interest to the buyer. So don't do what I did. Make sure that you've got nice crystal clear pictures. Number three, so the third way to fail at selling jewelry online is to not master writing a good title with lots of great descriptive keywords and writing a good description of your item in the description box. As you can see, once again, I am picking on one of my early listings. And all I put here is preserved rose hat pin hijab pin. And that's it. 
There are about a zillion different things I can think to right now, but when I was first starting out, I was like, I don't know, what is this? Uh, I thought it was being fancy because I threw hijab pin in there because maybe somebody would want to wear it in their hijab. And no. So now I know I would, you know, make flower, real flower, real rose, preserved, hat pin, maybe written both ways. Some people have it written out as two words, some people one word, uh, lapel pin. I mean, come on. There are so many different ways to describe this. And then down in my description, so again, once again, down here, how unique is this a real rosebud preserved for ornamentation? <laughs> Come on. So I could have done way better. And I'm not big on writing huge, long descriptions like I used to, um, but uh, there were definitely some keywords that I could have written here. And if this is the area where you get stuck, make sure to stay tuned at the end because I've got some help for you. Number four, the fourth way to fail at selling jewelry online is to omit measurements. I see this all the time and I even see it in some of my early listings. This one has got it all going on. Let's just put that right out there. It has horrible pictures. It has got a terrible, terrible title and there are no measurements in this thing. It's sold though. These are some of my sold ones. So, yeah, okay, let's just, we're going to take a peek at these pictures. I thought I was being so fancy. I put it on a shell. Um, okay. <laughs> but look, metal bangle bracelet. That's it. I could have, we're not even on titles anymore. Let's just get to the measurements, right? I did not put, um, so what I like to do now is get some photos of the ruler or measuring tape, whatever measuring device I have. Get some pictures of those. Etsy now allows 10 pictures. Back back then, this was only, they only allowed five. Um but you can get, you know, a measuring device, create a collage if you don't want to take up many of your photos. You can make create a collage with just for the measurements, and then put those measurements down there in the description box so that you're not getting messages um, from somebody saying, "What? How wide is this? Or how? What big size?" Um, because frequently, if the, if it's not there, they're just going to move on to the next one, right? There's so much out there that if they are not just like, I need this particular bracelet, what is the size of it? They're not going to message you, you know? So make sure you get those measurements in there from the get-go. Number five. So the fifth way to fail at selling jewelry is to try to sell fakes, knockoffs, or things that are banned, or mislabeling things. There are safeguards on both eBay and Etsy when it comes to selling fakes or banned items or counterfeits, things like that. Um, with eBay, they are really, really strict about it. If you're going to sell any kind of bone or ivory, you've got to know where it comes from. If you try to sell a knockoff, they will ban you. I mean, they, I don't know if they give you a suspension for that and then ban you later. Um, Etsy's the same way. If they catch it or someone reports it, you know, then you get a, you can get banned or blocked. Or, you know, they, they'll take things down on Etsy as well. So really be careful. And if you're not sure what something is or you're not sure if it's a knockoff or a counterfeit, um, there is a way to find out. Stay tuned. All right, bonus tips. Another thing that I notice in a lot of the groups that creates a sort of a failure is just a failure to launch. So many of you have really gotten into jewelry lately and you're kind of like me, you just hoard it until you list it. But sometimes some of the friends that we've got in our groups just hoard it and they're like, I don't even know where to start. So I think just that failure to launch, that failure to just get started, pick out a, a topic, pick out a theme, pick out bracelets, just grab your bracelets and go. You know, have, pick up black bangles. Just choose something and run with it. Now, the tips that I was telling you about to stay tuned for were, so knowing what you've got is key. And if you don't know what you've got and you don't know how to write titles, keywords, then here's what I suggest. Make sure you do these three things. Subscribe, follow, and join. So subscribe to my channel to get lots of great content. Follow me on Facebook at Texas Gal Treasures and join Texas Gals Jewelry Lovers. This is an amazing group, over a thousand members, lots of activity, very positive, very focused on learning and expanding our knowledge. So go in there. If you've got questions, drop an image. If you're not sure if something is real, if you're not sure what a maker's mark is, if you're not sure what the stone is, if you're not sure how to describe it. I mean, so there are so many different people that are so helpful in the group. Go in there, 
join, and if you've got questions, we can help you find the answers. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you go down there, leave me a comment, and let me know what is your failure when it comes to selling jewelry. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, you. <coughs> Woo! <laughs> There's a frog in my throat. I put. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, gosh. I just messed it all up. Messed it all up. Fine. Okay.